Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to change your rim brake blocks on a dual pivot caliper, so that's on the rim brake wheel. So let's go ahead, let's run through the steps. So, here we have the caliper, I'm just demonstrating it on. Now it's the same principle for a lot of the brake calipers. It might be slightly different in the way some of the things operate, but it's basically the same for any dual pivot caliper. Now this is using... Um, Shimano stroke SRAM brake blocks in here. They fit various um, calipers, so they are the same for many of them. Doesn't matter if it's not a Shimano caliper, still uses the same style brake block itself. We'll see on a touch of the rim. So on this, the pads are worn right down, so they obviously need changing now because they've worn down over time as it wears you can adjust your barrel adjuster on the caliper to obviously allow take up the extra gap where the pads have worn down so you can close up the actual caliper to the rim to allow for the wear on the actual blocks so you see you haven't got such a massive lever travel so as they wear you can still adjust it and keep the lever travel a reasonable distance on your levers. So being as that's the case then the first thing you want to look at is your barrel adjuster because that's been wound up to compensate for the wear of the, the brake blocks. So what we do is first of all is we wind that back down so as it moves the pads away from the rim because we need to fit new ones which are much thicker than the old ones so if this is the case on yours you want to wind the barrel adjuster back down to the, to the bottom so I'm winding that clockwise to screw it back down until it hits the stop like that so it might not look the same on your caliper as that it might be a plastic style um, adjuster it might be metal whichever but you need winding down to the bottom and then what you want to do is obviously let off your caliper so you can drop out the wheel just so you've got a bit more room to work so obviously you can undo your caliper like that as though you was going to drop your wheel out whichever yours is so they vary could have a plastic um, release on the side could be like this they'll could be slightly different so we just undo that and then we just drop the wheel out so we can get to the pads to put them back in easier so we got the wheel out of the way and then what you need to do to remove the old pads if you look on the back there there's a two millimeter hex that you need to undo So we just crack that undone to start with, just remove that. Should come undone pretty easily. And you just get on it and wind it all the way out. Just remove it right out of the way. And then See the pad itself is going to come out backwards out of the holder. So you can try and push it out like that. It might come out easily like this one. Just get hold of that and push on it all the way out. So I'll just slide that out like that. As you can see there, there's hardly anything left on it. So it's definitely due for replacement. So what we do is we slide the new one in. Now make sure before you slide the new one in, you just clean up inside where the pad's going to sit in there because the dirt can get in there over time. You might just need um, a cloth in there and clean that out before you go ahead and put the new pad in. So if you've removed your 2mm on the side there, I say your pad should come out relatively easily if you're pushing on it 
to get it out. Now, if you're pushing on it and that is really tight, you just can't you can't get it out of there, out of the holder itself. What you can do to make it easier to remove, is if you get a flat blade screwdriver, like that, and then if you put that and put it side on like this, so the thin side on the front of the pad, like that, and then use that on there to push against to get it out instead of your fingers and you see there it comes out a lot easier if it's tight to get it out to remove it so you have it there so the screwdriver just makes it helps it you get a lot more pressure on that than you can on your fingers trying to remove the pad if it's tight so the pads that I'm using are these Swiss Stop BXP for aluminium wheels the reason I'm using these is because in the winter time when it's wet roads, grimy roads your pads act like grinding paste against your wheels basically so the reason I'm using these is these are a lot kinder to your aluminium wheels than other manufacturers pads because I'd rather wear pads out than wear wheels out so these might be softer and they might not last as long but in the winter and the bad weather you don't want to be using a hard pad because it can wear your wheels away in no time and then your wheels are scrap so that's the reason I'm using these because they're a lot softer and they're a lot kinder to your aluminium wheels in the winter time so that's why I recommend using them especially in the winter that's the Swiss Stop BXP so is one I just removed as in comparison, there's hardly anything left on it compared to the new one. So these have a wear marker on the underside anyway. So it says wear limit and it's got a little line on it. So these are right on that line. That's why they're being changed. And also, when it comes to fitting them, many of these pads are similar somewhere on it and have an arrow or it has left and right written on it so you know which way obviously they go round when you slide them back into the holder it could have an arrow on the on the back here it could have an arrow on the top it could have left and right written on the back like these have this left and it's got an arrow um, on it as well pointing forwards like that in the direction they need to slide in so we'll go ahead we'll get these refitted so to reinstall the pads, it's just a case of pushing them back in, making sure you've got them the right way around. So you just offer it up there and push it back into place. Now, some of these can be tight to push in. So you have to use a bit of force on them to get them in all the way. Again, if you can't push them in using your finger or your thumb, some people might struggle so like I say on the end there get a big flat blade screwdriver on there and, and push on the screwdriver and push it in so you can get a big screwdriver like that and push on the screwdriver a bit of extra force on it push it in like that just help you get it in there if you haven't got enough uh, strength in your hand to push them in because some of them can be tight to install so once you've got it all the way in you can put the uh, grub screw back in there so you just refit that tighten it all the way up, up and just nip it nip it up no need to go mad with it you don't want to ram the uh, head off of it as soon as it stops moving that's tight enough and then just repeat the process on the other side so now we've refitted the rear wheel we can do up the caliper again like so and because like I said you've wound your barrel adjuster all the way down and you've got brand new pads in there the brake should be back to how it was when the pads were new originally so just check that just spin your wheel and then brake and make sure you're happy with the distance between the rim and the pad and the lever obviously, how you like the lever set at your end is all personal preference how you like the feel of the brake to be set 
Now, obviously, you can't, as the pads wear, you can wind the barrel adjuster to compensate, but now the barrel adjuster is wound all the way in and the pads are new, then you can't let it off no more. If you wind this anti-clockwise, it tightens them up even closer. So if yours are too far away still, you can just wind that up a couple of turns and it will just close up the gap if the gap is too big but you want it set just right like that so you only use the barrel adjuster as the brake blocks are wearing so you want it right at the bottom to start with when the pads are new with the appropriate gap making sure that the pads also when you brake on and off look closely at the rim either side to make sure the wheel is central to the caliper and it's not being pushed the rims not being pushed over left or right as you brake so you want the caliper making contact with the rim in the middle so it's when you brake it's not being pushed left and right if yours is going one way or the other slightly then somewhere on the caliper there'll be a little hex head on here there's one at the top there on Shimano's it'll be on the side nearer the pad that you can just adjust to centralise the caliper to the wheel and also make sure that your pads are making contact properly and you haven't got too much toe on the pad so the front of the pad's going to wear right out completely before it even touches the rear you want them wearing like that for instance it's the same all the way along the wear rate is the same so it's just not wearing one end faster than the other because you'll just wear out like the front edge completely before the back or vice versa so make sure there as you brake slowly and look at the pad they're making contact if they're not then you can adjust the pad just slacken off your five millimeter slightly just back that off a little bit and then adjust it and then just hold on the brake making sure it's making contact all the same time and then tighten up your five millimeter hex there when you're happy with them and also make sure that new brake blocks are the right height on the rim. They're not high, too high nearer the tyre or they're not too low on the rim. You just want to run in, in the middle of the brake tract. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to your channel for more cycle related content. Till next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.